In this video, I want to show you how quickly we can produce a TET mesh from complex solid geometry. So as an example, let me focus on these two parts. Uh, you can see uh, there's a good amount of detail on the model, a good number of features, and so on. Um, here, I'll leave one uh, as is, just for comparison, while the other one I'll go ahead and uh, change to a different color just so we work on this one uh, example. So before actually tent meshing this, let's go ahead and produce a surface mesh on the outer faces of the solid. So I want to use triangular elements and maybe uh, use a very large size uh, for the elements. Let's go ahead and mesh that. And here the reason I want to go ahead and do this is I want to leverage the element quality tool on the application so I can quickly identify where are the problem spots in the model. So let me hide the, the best elements. Let me hide the poor elements. And now what I'm looking at are the very bad and invalid elements. Let me actually hide the bad elements. So here we see very distorted uh, surface elements. So these are regions of the actual model and the geometry where we're going to have issues when we go ahead and actually make a tet mesh. So let me go ahead and uh, go back to the original solid geometry. And here you can see why we're going to have all these issues. So here's an example. We have this uh, very small face here. Uh, if we keep looking around, I'll find similar things such as uh, here. So these are things we have to go ahead and remedy. Uh, we do have a geometry repair tool in the application, so we'll go ahead and use that right now. So here you simply select the solid and you can view previews of uh, where all these problem areas are. But here what I want to go ahead and do is just uh, just clean up the entire uh, model. So let me go ahead and do that right now. And after the repair of the cleanup is done, we'll zoom in in those same areas and we'll find out that uh, we've gone ahead and remedied uh, a lot of those issues that we once had before. And here we look in the zones and you see that's uh, no longer an issue at least. Uh, the next thing we think we might want to do is actually defeature this model. So let me go ahead and uh, show the superimposed surface mesh. Here we can still work with the mesh superimposed. Um, here as an example, I want to defeature this uh, solid face. So I simply click on the feature and it removes it. I can do this one by one as I work through the model. I also have a sort of semi-automated uh, automatic approach to this. By that I mean I can individually select the faces to defeature and Apex goes ahead and removes that. Here I have some additional faces I want to remove too and boom 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 those features are gone. But when you have a model that has dozens of features we want to do this all in one go so we'll go ahead and select uh, this other method of defeaturing. Here I've selected all these features to go ahead and remove. I have this nice nifty ranger that helps me select specific de uh, features to remove. But here I want to remove all the ones that are highlighted in blue so we'll go ahead and do that now. You see we've gone ahead and done that. Uh, for the rest of the features I can continue using the defeaturing tool to go ahead and uh, remove these. So we just click on the model on a one per one basis and you see how far we've gone ahead with the defeaturing. And you'll notice that uh, the mesh is automatically being updated as we work with the model. And you can see we're slowly approaching something that uh, is something we, we originally intended to have. And here's just a few additional features I want to remove. And so far we've been working on a surface mesh, which is giving us insight into what a subsequent tent mesh could look like. At this point, I think I'm fairly comfortable with what I have, so I'll remove this uh, surface mesh and now mesh the model with the actual TET elements. So here we go. We have a TET mesh geometry, and I did that in a matter of moments. It didn't take me an hour or two hours to go ahead and find each problem spot and actually fix that. I did that in uh, a relatively short amount of time. The next thing we might want to do is actually add some uh, 
uh, washers around these holes um, just so we get that really good match for subsequent analysis. We have this other capability where we can define uh, mesh criteria for things such as fillets, chamfers, and even washers. So here, let me uh, specify a range. So here I'll be using uh, the radius of this hole and I'll make a quick configuration here. And when I go back to the solid mesh, I have this option of imposing uh, feature mesh definitions. And I'll just select the washer definition we just uh, created. And then we'll go ahead and remesh this. And you'll notice that in the update, we have a nice uniform washer around the holes here and here. And if we zoom out, we see the same thing here. So we did that in a relatively short amount of time. And just to contrast uh, why this method is a lot better and even faster in Apex, uh, let me just go ahead and tet mesh the solid on the left or the right. The one thing you'll notice uh, when I do that, and we'll use the same 20 millimeter mesh size, when we look at the element quality, you'll find that Well, I'm looking at the wrong element quality type. Here we go. When I remove the, or when I hide all the good, poor, and the bad elements, you can see that the original solid model actually had one poorly distorted TET element. But after we went through the whole refining process of uh, cleaning up the geometry, removing all the fillets, etc., we have a nice, uh, mesh with uh, relatively good elements. So let me go back and uh, exit this. So here, let me just show the tet, final tet mesh we have. Uh, beyond the geometry editing and meshing tools in Apex, we actually can perform analysis. So here, let me just create a quick material for this. We'll use uh, aluminum as an, one example. I'll insert a Young's modulus and a Poisson ratio. And then I'll assign it to this model. And now I'll load it here into the analysis module here in the bottom. We want to perform a normal modes analysis. And one thing you notice, uh, before I can actually perform an analysis by clicking uh, the third icon, I have this analysis readiness check. What this lets me do is, or what Apex does for me, it inspects the model to make sure there's nothing immediately wrong with the model. And this is very useful because here, I'm noticing that I'm missing a density definition for this material. Uh, before, I would have had to actually uh, made an attempt to for perform an analysis, but here, uh, Apex caught it before I actually uh, committed to a uh, lengthy analysis over here. So hopefully I, I have the right density there. And uh, you now see that uh, analysis readiness is good to go. This enables me to actually perform uh, actual analysis. And the other significant thing about this application is that the, the solver is embedded in the application. You do the analysis within the application. You view the results all within the same application. So here I'm able to view the normal modes you see the various uh, shapes and so on. But now, suppose that I want to modify the geometry some way. Uh, the sizing is not adequate. Uh, so here, let me just go ahead and take one of our direct modeling tools. And here, we may want to extrude this because we found this wall here was just too uh, thin. So here, I'll just take this face and extrude it as shown. A number of things happen in the application. One, the mesh is automatically updated. Uh, we didn't have to delete the mesh and recreate it. Here, I'll do the same thing here. And the other thing too, if I had a boundary condition applied to this boundary face, it will automatically update that for me. And at every single part of the, the process, uh, analysis readiness is actively checking the model making sure it's ready to go. And the moment there's something wrong, it flags me, the user, telling me there's something wrong. So here we're performing our second analysis, and here we've already conducted our second analysis within a matter of minutes. 
Uh, so that just shows you how quickly we can produce a TED mesh in MC Apex. Now what I want to do is show you some of the other things we can do in the application you might find useful when working with solid geometry. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is a transform capability. Uh, so here, if I want to take a wheel as one example, I simply click it and use the vectors here to move it left or right, move it up and down. Maybe I might want to rotate this model. So here I'll rotate it about the, the X. And then suppose um, this transformation or rotation was something I didn't want. Uh, we have the undo capability that goes back uh, various steps. So you can always back out of uh, something you've done uh, for a few minutes. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, hide some of these parts too. The other thing we've demoed throughout the demonstration is the ability to modify geometry very dynamically. Uh, depending on which uh, application you're using today, it might be a very tedious process. You might have to use form after form, designating uh, geometry entity after entity, uh, trying to just define a one millimeter uh, extrusion. But here with MSC Apex, I can do this very quickly. And it's not only applicable to uh, solid faces, you can do this for holes even. So here is another example. I want this diameter to be reduced so I can do that again and again. And as always, you can back out by doing the undo. Now let me go back a little. Let me focus on just one of these parts. In addition to all this geometry editing capability, we add some capability to even sketch and produce some geometry. So here, just to show you one example, let me delete these holes. And for the sake of the demo, let's suppose that these holes were not in here to begin with. Uh, here, someone handed me the geometry. I will have to go ahead and add the geometry just to expedite the process. So here, let me just take the solid phase let me go ahead and just add a hole here and exit that. And then I'll go back to my uh, push-pull tool and recreate the holes. And then obviously if I need to adjust the holes as such, I can continue doing that. Let me go ahead and show the original model. And now Going back to the geometry and the mesh we originally worked with, uh, you may not, or you may have a, a, a separate package to do your analysis. So you, you may want to export this geometry and mesh. Uh, we support this in MSC Apex, so just to show you, let's go ahead and export the geometry. We can export the geometry in Parasolid file format. And now for the mesh, we can export this to the familiar BDF file format. So here, let me just export this to my desktop. Here we support units for now, I'll leave it as is. Let me go ahead and open what that looks like. So here you'll find the elements and the no locations that you can easily import to another application uh, that supports it in Nastran file formats. Uh, with that, I hopefully uh, you found a great appreciation to how quickly you can develop a TED mesh in MSC Apex. You saw I started with the original very complex solid geometry here shown on the right, and I was quickly able to reduce it, simplify it, defeature it, and so on. Uh, I was even able to perform two analyses all within 10-15 uh, minutes, however long this demo actually took. If you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to take them at this point. Thank you for watching.